I decided to uh, go ahead and build the front end just to see how everything looked. We're just not drilled or pinned yet, but I did sit here and tap on it. You can piece of brass here until I got it all centered up with my laser bore here. I, I prefer this method instead of the ones that actually go into the back here in the chamber. Because like I said, if your barrel is drilled slightly off center, that laser will still shine without touching the end straight out and then you'll set your sights up to that chambered one and uh, you'll be off. This one actually goes inside the rifling, which is what this little plastic piece is back here. Get it centered up and it's going to tell you, even if it's slightly off, it's still going to tell you where that bullet, that projectile is coming out of the barrel, even if the barrel is drilled slightly off center. So I prefer this type. I don't care for the type either that just is a magnet that sticks to the end because what if the end for some strange reason is slightly off and it's not a perfect 90. And it still doesn't account for if the barrel is drilled slightly crooked and I have seen those. But this is an original Romanian barrel I got a while back. It doesn't look too shabby. I was thinking about milling this out but I'm kind of liking the actual closed hood here. Almost like an SKS or something. But you'll need one of these. And you can't start this into the new front sight with this. You'll have to come up with a way to kind of smash it in there. I put it in my vise. Kind of got it lined up as good I, as I could in my bench vise. And put a steel nut on the other side just so nothing here would touch started slowly getting it worked in to where I could just get this on here and then press it the rest of the way. And everything's perfectly straight. And when you when you put these on, these little bands, if you're using an Ultimac, like this one is the, uh, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. It's the M1B. But either one though, these little barrel bands here. Make sure they're straight. Sometimes when you go to lock this thing down, one of these bands can slightly be kicked over where it's touching on one side, but it's not touching on the other. Then you lock it down, then it get it all hot. The next thing you know, it does move a little bit. Make sure they're laying flat and they're perfectly straight. Don't let them tilt a little bit because they will when you first start tightening them up. Now, I took it from a uh, rifle dynamics and just pushed it all the way forward. Now on this one here, it's just got one little hole at the top and one underneath where they drilled it straight through. Unlike this, where they've drilled at an angle in two different directions to give you four ports on here to vent the gas. This is only got those. So hopefully it'll vent enough. If it doesn't vent enough here, it'll dang sure vent enough back here because there is a gap in there, which you're supposed to have a gap. They tell you to even it from front to back, but if Rifle Dynamics is shoving them all the way up on the front here, well, it's good enough for me. What I will do is I'll take this and do what Jim Fuller does from Rifle Dynamics, and I'll open this up. I'll put it in the mill, put it in the mill in here, open this up just a little bit, and then I'll round these edges off. That makes for a lot quicker sight picture or sight acquisition you can bring it up a lot quicker when that's in there I've got it on a few of my other rifles I've done that this one's still just a standard little notch in the back I'll take it to work and do that I'm trying to decide on taking the camera to work what I want to show and what I don't want to show one thing about this right here is it has the window for the latch but there's no hole in the bottom now, if you buy one of the 545 side folders, the hole's already there for the pin to go in. And the pin looks like a short version of the pins that go in the side for your trigger and hammer. But it goes underneath here and held in by a spring. And this will have to be machined. There will have to be a flat put on this corner here, and then I'll have to drill the hole for that pin to make clearance in. Once you get this hole here, they give you instructions. They give you the dimensions from the front and from the side, where to put the hole. Once you get that in there and you put it back inside, that hole will actually be a template now. Put the same size drill in it, and then you can run it 
through here and then that gives you your pilot hole to put the actual six millimeter or whatever size hole it is that's supposed to go on this side. So I was kind of wondering, it's like, I wonder how I'm supposed to figure out where to put the hole on this thing because I don't have a 545 trunnion to copy the, the dimensions on to know where to put that hole. But luckily, Curtis from AK Builder, they give you some instructions that you actually has pictures and shows you the lines, which direction, where to put the hole in the trunnion. Then you can use the trunnion as the template to put the hole in this. So that's good. My only problem is, is now I've got to buy some more rivets because I didn't realize all of these are counterboard or have a chamfer in them, which means you'll, or at least I will, divot them. Uh, do I have to? No, but if it's already done like this, I'm putting swell necks in it because that's what it looks like it's designed for. All I have is just a regular fixed stock rivet set. And I've got a few oddball rivets, but that would still leave me with two left over. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy another package of rivets. It's only nine bucks. It, hell, it's going to cost almost as much just to ship them, so I may buy some extra stuff too. There's my break on there that I made. There's my little boo-boo. Whoops. -boo. As you can see, there's a notch back here. Hopefully you can see that. Still see the notch where the pin was going through. So if I decide to use this brake, I was going to shorten the muzzle or the barrel, but I don't know if I really want to do that or not. Because if I leave it stock like this, I can, I mean, I, just, I don't know. I mean, I can shorten it up to about that long. I mean, I've got a die, I've got you know, all that stuff. I could re-thread it, no problem. But the way this one's designed, going over it, they just weld that hole up, clean it all back up, put this on here, and then just put a pin in it. There's not enough shoulder to put a crush washer on here, you know, where I could just torque it and tighten it on there like you can with an AR. Because the whole initial thing was for it to slip over anyway, and then I was going to blind, blind hole pin it. See, it's tight right there. And I've got my wrench flats on here. It's already at the end, so I guess I'll just back it off to where it's level. So I can go ahead and drill it and pin it, which means it's permanent. It's, never, it's not going to come back off without oversized drilling where you put that pin in. But with the muzzle being all the way at the end here, should be good for cleaning out. There's no little area in there. Some of the other ones that you put on, there's a little gap in there. Maybe they're supposed to be, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an engineer, I don't design these things. I just looked at a picture that I printed off the internet and just got on the machine and just wrote my own program and made this. Looks kind of cool on there. I was worried about having a long section across here. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's still a long section, even if this piece was on there. My weird way of thinking is like, whoa, you could bend that, but it would bend even if this was on here. It's the same thing. I don't know. I just think of weird stuff like that from time to time. But that's why a lot of times I probably end up making this way harder than it needs to be because I try to overthink everything. Sometimes that's not a good thing. Sometimes just as simple as can be is the best way to go. So I kind of like this. I may just take it to work. Well, I'm going to have to take it to work anyway, but I'll spot weld that, that area right there. Fill it all up, come in, hand file it, get it all nice and smooth again. And then I'll blind hole pin this on there. All right, we got the our bent side folder in the AK Builder receiver blank jig here. We have to drill out the two smaller axis pin holes, the center support rivet. And there's little bitty teeny tiny holes in there. And as you can see with this first one I bent, two little bitty holes right there. Center support, there's your hammer, and this is the trigger. Anytime there's one near a bin, like I said, it's got to be redrilled. These are about 25 thousandths undersize here. And the other center support. Everything else, all the holes, 
that are actually in the jig all match up almost dead perfect. So Curtis and them are doing an outstanding job. We'll take it over to the press and drill press and pop these holes right quick and then we'll put the holes in for the trunnion.